Good morning, everybody. Mike Vaki, PrincetonTrader.com, here with your Thursday market webcast. Okay, uh, the Bears have engaged the lower Bollinger Band. Uh, they did it on Tuesday. They did it again yesterday. They've engaged it again today. So we're on what's called a lower Bollinger Band ride. Now, lower Bollinger Band rides tend to make highs earlier in the day and then go ahead and take out lows of the day late in the day. And you saw, you really saw that yesterday. It was a pretty good picture of it. Well, I'll be interested to see how, how today works out. Uh, hourly chart, the question I had asked yesterday going into the day was, where do we close relative to the 100-day uh, moving average? So you can see they took it out early in Globex. We traded over it for a bit as late, you know, right right into the open. And, and like I mentioned, with lower Bollinger Band rides, you make early highs. This is the nine o'clock hour, ten o'clock hour, lower high here, and then when it finally sealed off that 100 and broke it, clinged and made a lower low, closing at or on the lows of the day. So that's very textbook as far as lower Bollinger Band rides are concerned. The trap that traders fall into in these band rides. The trap that they fall into is they assume that you know with an upper band ride, it's you know they start top calling. All right, that's it. That's it. Short that. Short that. Short that. Short that. To a lesser extent, but it can be just as damaging. You'll see people come in now and just be like, "Well, that's the bottom. That's the bottom. That's the bottom. That's the bottom." Like this. That's the bottom. Wrong. That's the bottom. Wrong. That's the bottom. Wrong. That's the bottom. Stop it. Just stop. Stop it. There's going to be pops. There's going to be pops. There's going to be sustained pops, like there was in Globex, um, uh, not last night, but the night before. There's going to be little pops, but those pops tend to be sold. And I've always said, in these down markets, these rallies, you can be long, you can stand aside, you don't want to be early short. At the same time, when they start to fail, when it starts to go bad, you need to be there. Look, we were long for this one right here took our profits, but then we got stopped out and they just had no desire to be anywhere near above 80. So we end up getting short in the 77s and well, we end up with a really nice short in the close, a great big one actually. But that's because you recognize when this is fading and it's not a blind fade, it's a look, you gotta show me what you can do. Don't start assuming that the bears are going to act great. They act great till they don't. But you get some lower highs, you get it breaking some key areas, and you need to be there. But this is where you get stubborn dip buyers too. And if they keep knocking the stubborn dip buyers right out of their trades, in whatever underlying stocks they're messing around in, you're going to continue to get this lower Bollinger Band ride. It's going to continue to bleed out to the downside until you know they find some value and, and they find their feet and they say, you know, we want to be here. Is that 45, 14 half? I will tell you what nobody else will tell you. I have no clue whether 45, 14 half is the low or not. I don't know. And I don't care. You know why? Because that doesn't make you any money. It doesn't make me any money. What makes me money and what makes you money and what makes the subscribers money is what's the next 10 handles going to do? And how do we set up risk reward for the next 10 handles? If you do that, then the next 10 handles and the next 10 handles, that's how you end up with 77s that go down to 14 or wherever the hell it went. Stop trying to predict what the market's going to do and start trying to understand where risk is, where the key levels are, and where you need to be to set yourself up to get free looks at stuff that's probably going to work. Like when people come in, they, add, they go, well, what's your, you know, System. There's no system. Well, what, what do you, what, I mean, what do you do? And I thought about it for a while. I mean, we've been doing this over 10 years. I'm like, you know what we do? Here's what we do. We identify risk. We put out a risk marker. And we put out risk markers and try to position ourselves in things where we are getting free looks at stuff that's probably going to work like very probably gonna work. And if it doesn't, fine, but most of the time it does. So what's a free look for us? Anytime we get two handles to the good on a trade, we move our one and a half point stop to even stop. And then we're just messing with commission. We take our first third of our trade, 
basically typically six handles, middle third at 10, the runners, the runner is the runner. And since our goal is to make four a day, that's what we do. And we do it again and again and again and again. And we do that. That's the thing that we do. It's not, oh, we're going to try this method today. Or we're going to do this today. The best traders don't wake up in the morning and try to reinvent themselves every day. I'll say that again. The best traders don't try to wake up in the morning and reinvent themselves every day. They find something that they do and they keep doing that. Find what you can do and keep doing that. It's the way to go. So in markets like this, you're going to see people throwing darts at lows. You're going to see it all the time. Some of them are going to work. And when it works, you can be long and stand aside. But when it stops working, don't get stubborn long. And what will happen? So what happens when this all ends, right? Okay. So we bounce. It'll, it'll, it'll fade back. You'll have people get out of those longs and you'll have the shorts come in and just basically Pavlov's dog come in and do it. What will happen is it'll come in a little bit and then they're going to get their heads ripped off. You make the higher high. And then for me, you've got to be there long because that's something that potentially could keep going. Um, if that doesn't work, then probably what you're going to get is some kind of a triangle and you're going to want to step aside anyway. But you have to be flexible. You've got to be flexible. And in volatile markets, it's a lot easier to be flexible. I know it's moving fast, but in the moving fast, you can also get your risk out a lot faster versus tight markets that aren't moving where your entries really have to be perfect. That's not what we're in right now. The volatility is not insane. It's not insane. But it's enough to, you know, and there's a lot of whip in the tape. So respect risk. Come up with your set of rules and do that. Do that. It's consistency that's going to take you where you want to go. All right. I've preached enough. Everybody have a fantastic day. Be safe. Be healthy. Take care. Trade them well. It was a little more of a rant that I planned on doing this morning. Be good. I will talk to everybody tomorrow.